Good evening. The St. Regis Parish family gathers for the great sacrament of confirmation. Please stand. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. Renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. Renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. Renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit. Renew the face of the Now we sing together, spirit of hope and of light, fill our lives. Come to us, spirit of God. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather together this evening to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. As we have been doing throughout the summer, uh, we are catching up, I guess, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, on uh, those things that got delayed because of our shutdown during the spring. Uh, we spend July... Uh, making up First Holy Communions throughout the month. And we, as we begin August, we begin the process of celebrating the Sacrament of Confirmation. Uh, not quite in the way that was anticipated, but nevertheless, uh, the, the sacrament uh, is durable. Uh, the church is durable, and we do this a little differently than we were anticipating, but nevertheless, uh, we give praise to God as we're able to celebrate this sacrament. And so with joy and gratitude, let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit, coming near and dwelling graciously within us, may make of us a perfect temple of his glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now be seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. There are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. There are different works, but the same God who accomplishes all of them in every one. To each person, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, the Spirit gives wisdom in discourse. To another, the power to express knowledge. Through the Spirit, one receives faith. By the same Spirit, another is given the gift of healing, and still another, miraculous powers. Prophecy is given to one. To another, power to distinguish one spirit from another. One receives the gift of tongues, another that of interpreting the tongues. But it is one and the same spirit who produces all these gifts, distributing them to each as he wills. The body is one and has many members, but all the members, many though they are, are one body, and so it is with Christ. 
It was in one spirit that all of us, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, were baptized into one body. All of us have been given to drink of the one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. 
Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I found myself saying this quite a bit over the past few months, that I'm doing things that I have not done in 24 years of priesthood. I've never had to give a confirmation homily before, and I've never had to be the main celebrant at a confirmation ceremony like this. Um, I know you guys were expecting a lot more. You guys were all expecting a lot more. Guy in a pointy hat, big festive occasion that we were supposed to have at St. Barbara's a few months ago. So sorry to disappoint, um, but what is happening here uh, is happening around the diocese and all of the parishes. Um, as it is impossible uh, to make up all of those confirmations that were missed during the coronavirus shutdown. So Bishop Molesic has given us a one-time uh, delegation for pastors to celebrate the sacrament with our parishioners uh, in the parish. Um, and so in order to uh, do that, we've, with our numbers, have cut our ceremony into four parts. Uh, and you guys are part one. So you're the guinea pigs. You're the first ones I'm ever doing this with. Uh, so I thought about what do I do? And I thought back to my own confirmation when I was about your age. Um, and our auxiliary bishop at the time, some of you may remember Bishop Gone. I know you guys don't. Um, but some of the adults may remember Bishop Gone. Uh, and I remember him coming to our church and celebrating the sacrament of confirmation with us. And Bishop Gone was a rather stern, older guy. I hope I'm not that stern looking as he was. Um, but he would ask questions. So I thought, should I ask you guys questions? I don't know if you're smiling behind those masks or if you're terrified. You want questions? No, I didn't think so. Because I know I didn't want questions. So no questions. But hopefully... Uh, just a few thoughts as we celebrate this sacrament. The readings tonight do a good job of helping us to understand what the significance of this sacrament is. And it is maybe a little difficult for us to get our uh, understanding. You know, baptism, you know, maybe it's a little easier for us, First Communion. Confirmation, um, it has been said, is sometimes a sacrament looking for uh, theology. Um, we've you know, different dioceses do different things with confirmation, and we confirm at different ages. But the sacrament itself is very simple. It is, in the words of some theologians, a good way to remember it, a sacrament of Christian maturity. You are, in a sense, confirming what happened at baptism. We are confirming what happened at your baptism. Do any of you remember your baptism? Show of hands, anybody remember your baptism? I wouldn't think so, because probably for most of you, your baptism happened very early in your life. And when you were baptized, you were brought, um, you had no will of your own other than to cry or not cry uh, when your parents brought you into the church uh, and you were baptized. And at that time, your parents and your godparents spoke for you, renewing their baptismal promises and making those promises for you. And you not only encountered the Lord sacramentally for the first time in baptism, but also the Holy Spirit. Now you are at a point in your life when you can speak for yourself. 
And so part of this ceremony, we will renew our baptismal promises. Those promises that were made for you at some point in the past. That which is most essential to our faith. And rather than having somebody else speak for you, you can now speak for yourself. Those baptismal promises. And then, in the very simple and very ancient celebration of the sacrament, you are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who St. Paul tells us tonight, imparts many different gifts. The Spirit imparts the gifts of wisdom, of teaching, many other things. You have already received those gifts, as all of us do. And it is the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens you and seals you to use those gifts. To use those gifts as members of the body of Christ, as members of the church. It is the Holy Spirit, in the words of Jesus in the Gospel tonight, who stands with you. Jesus says, I will send the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the one who stands with you, to teach you and remind you of everything. It is that Holy Spirit who gives gifts. It is that Holy Spirit who stands with believers, who stands with the church, that you will be sealed with tonight. So that you may continue your journey as members of the body of Christ. So that you may grow as disciples. Confirmation is not the end of anything, except maybe confirmation classes. But it's not the end of learning about your faith. It's not a graduation. But it is a gift as all sacraments are gifts, so that we can continue the journey. As you're sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, you can go forth and you can continue to learn and grow in your faith, and I pray that you will. But that decision is yours. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are there. You will be sealed with that Holy Spirit. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, stands with you. But you have to be open to allow the Holy Spirit into your life to work. It is the Spirit who guides us as disciples. It is the Spirit who inspires us. Just as the Spirit inspired the prophets, and the evangelists, and the writers of Scripture long ago, the Holy Spirit who inspired saints throughout the history of the church to do amazing things, That same Holy Spirit inspires each of us, inspires you, if you allow Him to do great things in you, great things as members of the body of Christ, to use the gifts that you've already been given for the good of the church, for the good of your brothers and sisters, to build up to proclaim the good news, to be witnesses in the world. That is what we celebrate here. We pray for the Spirit to be with you. We pray for the Spirit to guide you. We pray for the Spirit to work in you, not just now, not just while you're still in school, but all the days of your life. To be sealed with that Spirit, to continue to grow as disciples, to grow closer as brothers and sisters in the Lord, and to go, grow closer to the Lord Himself. As we are open to receive the Spirit, Jesus says, the Father and I reside in you, reside with you. But again, it's up to us to be open to allow that spirit to work. 
And so as we call on the Holy Spirit in this sacrament of confirmation, let us pray for our candidates about to be confirmed, that as they are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will continue that process of maturing. As they make their baptismal commitment, remake their baptismal commitment, that they may make it with sincerity. And as they are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will continue to grow, recognizing the gifts that God has given, and be strengthened to use those gifts in the way that God would have you do, so that you may be good disciples, so that you may be effective witnesses, that Christ is truly present in you, and that you may take Christ to the world. I invite the candidates for confirmation to stand. Father George, I am pleased to present to you the candidates from our parish. They have prepared for confirmation through participating in the sacramental life of the church, listening to the word of God, attending religion classes, participating in a retreat and other activities, and demonstrating Christian service. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayer and example. Now, encouraged by their families, teachers, and friends, they ask to be confirmed. I receive these candidates for the sacrament of confirmation and ask the assembly to express its support by offering them a round of applause. And I told you this is a first for me. They were supposed to do this before I preached, so we get to continue on. Candidates, you have been preparing to celebrate the sacraments, and you've asked to be confirmed. Your parents agreed to your request. Your teachers, sponsors, and friends have helped you, and all who have come here today promise you the example of their faith and loving support. So now before you receive the Holy Spirit, I ask you to renew the profession of faith your parents and godparents made for you at baptism in union with the whole church. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out 
the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. James, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, James. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Elizabeth. Bernadette, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Bernadette. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Anthony. Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Paul. Christina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Christina. Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Paul. John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, John.
Let us stand. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask, pray to God the Father Almighty to be of one mind and in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from the Holy Spirit, are one. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For these, his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by their word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one Maker and Father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit we pray Lord hear our prayer O God who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us now gather our petitions, praying with one voice as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Karen, do we have any announcements? Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, do, they, do we have to get a picture after we're done? Okay. So we'll process out. Don't go anywhere. We'll get a, pi a group picture and then in time for individual pictures. Is that basically what we're going to do? Okay. All right. Very good. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. And please respond to each invocation with a hearty and heartfelt amen. May God the Almighty Father bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May God, may his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of the truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.